Hello all, my name is Krishnak and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today in this particular video, I'll be discussing about Pearson Correlation Coefficient. Now this is one of the most important technique in statistics because this technique will also be used for feature selection process. Now in my previous video, I've already uploaded videos regarding covariance and I've actually discussed the formula. If you have not seen covariance guys, please I would suggest you see covariance, understand what exactly is covariance. The link is basically given in the description box or you can also see in the top card which is on your right hand side corner of the screen. Now, first of all, we'll just revise uh, why this all terms are basically used like covariance, Pearson correlation coefficient, Spearman rank correlation coefficient. So let us take an example wherein, you know, suppose I have a data set in which I have an independent feature like uh, height, okay and and another dependent independent sorry this is my independent feature and this is my dependent feature okay so x and y i'm just considering this as x and y and these are my heights and the weight parameter and i'm basically collecting it for various people okay now suppose i have all the data over here right now with respect to this particular data if i have some independent features and a dependent feature or it may be independent features only all the features may be independent feature also how do i actually find out the relationship between these two variables that is x and y okay and for finding out the relationship like uh, what 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 relationship i'm just talking about i'll just tell you in a while okay so i can just consider that suppose if x increases will y increase or not okay or if x decreases will y decrease or not okay so this kind of relationship we, we should try to find out because this relationship plays a very very important role you know because when you're doing statistical analysis when you're trying to apply machine learning algorithm if you're able to find out this particular relationship you can do a whole lot of things now to understand this particular relationship we use techniques like covariance pearson correlation coefficient and today i'll be discussing about pearson correlation coefficient i've already made a video on covariance uh, in my previous video in the statistics playlist only and then in my next video i'll be discussing about spearman rank correlation coefficient so let us understand what does covariance basically say now suppose i have i have uh, if i want to find out the covariance between x and y okay i'll just revise this because i've already explained this this is the formula for that suppose if i have a situation wherein if my x increases or my y also increases that basically when my height is increasing my weight will also increase suppose this is the scenario at that time your covariance will be positive okay your covariance will be positive and similarly over here in this case when your x is increasing your y is decreasing in this case your covariance will be negative so here what is covariance actually helping us to do? It is helping us to find the direction of the relationship. This is what I'm actually talking about. The direction of the relationship. Now, in this case, I know that when X is increasing, Y is increasing. So I have a positive direction, you know. So this is basically quantifying the relationship between X and Y. And similarly, when I have X is increasing, Y is decreasing, I'm getting the covariance value as negative. That basically means when I apply this formula, I will basically be getting this negative value. So in short, this is helping us to find out the direction of the relationship. Okay. Now I'll talk about the strength also. Okay. Now this was all about covariance and this I had already discussed in my previous uh, videos. If not, please go ahead and have a look. Now let us understand another topic, which is today's most important topic, which is called as Pearson correlation coefficient. Now in Pearson correlation coefficient, we basically give by this symbol. It is nothing but covariance of x comma y divided by, you know, standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y. Now, just understand in covariance, we have this particular formula. In order to find out Pearson correlation coefficient, we are just dividing covariance of x comma y divided by the standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y. Now, in this case, we are basically considering the variance of x and y, right? Always remember in covariance, we just try to find out the direction of relationship, but we don't know how much positive or how much negative it may be, you know, how much positive, how much positive direction it has. What is, what is this positive value? It may be any infinite value. Similarly, this negative may be any infinite value, right? So in this case, what Pearson correlation coefficient says that based on your variance of X and Y, I'll be able to help you out and tell you that this particular parameters one is the strength okay how strong this is correlated 
okay how strong this is correlated apart from that it will also see the direction of the relationship so it is combining both these things and which is very very good right in covariation i don't know i don't know how much is the strength of the positivity or the negativity or what is the strength of that particular direction that i am trying to follow with respect to the relationship but with respect to correlation coefficient since i am dividing it by standard uh, standard deviation of x and y it helps us to know the strength the strength like how much positivity is correlated how much negativity is correlated now guys always remember that whenever you are trying to find out the correlation coefficient with respect to pearson your your value will be ranging between minus 1 to plus 1 always remember that your range will always be between minus 1 to plus 1 whenever you are trying to find out the correlation coefficient since we are dividing with the standard deviation of x and y right it is always you know compulsory that since it is just a common sense guys if you are trying to divide with the variance with respect to this covariance we'll always get the strength like how much strength it is okay and always remember it will be uh, ranging between minus 1 to plus 1 okay so let let me write it at less than or equal to so this is one of the property of pearson correlation coefficient now apart from this we'll also understand by geometrically i'll draw some diagrams and why this particular range will always be when it will be 1 when it will be minus 1 when it will be 0 you know all this kind of scenarios also we'll try to understand and that is what i'm going to do now i'll create all these diagrams i'll rub this whole diagram and i'll create that so guys now we have understood what exactly is pearson correlation coefficient and we also understand that what will be the range of values of the correlation coefficient uh, with respect to pearson and with respect to this particular formula now let us understand when this uh, pearson correlation coefficient value will be 1 when it will be minus 1 when it will be 0 and when it will be always between you know minus 1 to 0 or 0 to plus 1 okay so over here you can see that all the points now i have just drawn a scattered diagram over here of x and y now suppose these are my uh, x and y coordinates that i have plotted okay and suppose if i draw a straight line and this particular scenario we can definitely say that our uh, pearson correlation uh, coefficient will always be 1 because this all points fall in a straight line now similarly when i draw these points with respect to my x and y axis and here you can see that as my x increases right my y decreases okay so sorry in, uh, it should be opposite way uh as my uh, x decreases my y increases right so as my x decreases my y increases so this is the co co coefficient that i am basically getting and in this particular case i see that it is inversely proportional right over here it is uh, as the x is increasing okay y also is increasing right i have this kind of scenario over here so you can understand by this your correlation coefficient is 1 in this case your correlation coefficient will be minus 1 because as the x is decreasing y is increasing okay now uh, similarly in this particular case i i don't have an interrelationship over here you know it is scattered just normally okay there is no relationship we cannot basically say that when the x is increasing y is increasing because i have both the scenarios when x is increasing y is also decreasing when x is decreasing y is also increasing so all these scenarios i have so usually the pearson correlation coefficient value will be always zero you know and apart from this if we see this particular scenario some of the points are actually having this this is my x and y value you can see that when my again x value is decreasing my y is increasing but they are not in a straight line so that basically means my correlation coefficient will be ranging between minus 1 to 0 okay i'll show you one more scenario where i have a range between you know 0 to 1 so suppose this is my points and these are not falling all in the straight line i'll just draw a line over here this is my x and y in this case my row of x comma y will be ranging between you know 0 to less than or equal to row coefficient of x of y is less than or equal to 1 because i know when the x is increasing the y is also increasing in this case but this are not falling all in the straight points like this okay so we can basically understand these all scenarios from here and that is what correlation coefficient says so this 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 technique is basically used in feature selection guys Now just understand. Suppose I have three variables x, y, and z. Suppose my x are my independent x and y are my independent feature. My y is the output variable, which is my dependent feature. Now suppose I find out that the correlation between x and y is one. That basically means when my x is increasing, my y is also increasing, right? In that scenario, what can I do? Just understand. Just think in in some way, right? 
since x is increasing y is increasing i know that the correlation is one that basically means these two features are same right these two features are same so what i can do i can drop one of this feature you know i can drop one of this feature and i can basically just take one feature and execute this particular problem statement i can apply a machine learning algorithm and this is how important correlation is basically okay and here we are basically discussing about pearson correlation correlation coefficient there was some disadvantage in covariance because we were not able to know you know what is the strength of the direction that it is moving whether it is how much it is positive how much it is negative whereas in pearson correlation coefficient because since we are dividing it by standard deviation of x and y okay it should be multiplied by standard deviation of y right because of this we are able to measure the strength and the strength will always be ra ranging between minus 1 to plus 1 okay so this was all about this interesting video i hope you like this particular video uh, in my next video i'll, I'll be coming up with uh, spearman rank correlation coefficient again there are some disadvantages over this so because of that that is basically implemented and in my next video i'll be discussing about that so i hope you understood about these videos please do share with all your friends whoever require this kind of help I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys.